Microsoft Recall is a security nightmare. This story and more on this week's episode of ThreatWire. A quick first story. Ticketmaster was hacked. Ticketmaster became aware of this infiltration on May 20th, 2024, according to the 8K they filed with the SEC. The threat actor named Shiny Hunters came to light after they were discovered to be selling 1.3 terabytes of customer data, estimated to be 560 million customers worth of info. They were asking for 500,000 US dollars for the data and allegedly had interested buyers. Research firm Hudson Rock published an article that asserted that the cloud company Snowflake was allegedly at fault for the infiltration. However, that was later removed. This did not stop news outlets from running with the false blame, but Snowflake has come out and stated in certain terms that they are not at fault. Instead, the alleged hackers let us know via conversation with VX Underground that the data was attainable through the company's AWS instances. Ticketmaster is already under high scrutiny, so we'll see how this affects the company as a whole and if it adds more fuel to the fire for breaking up the company's monopoly on the live entertainment industry. On May 20th, Microsoft announced a new series of computers that are optimized for AI called Copilot Plus PC. These computers come pre-equipped with AI, including a new feature called Recall, which uses a local AI model and screenshots to create a generic search for your computer. It sounds kind of like Max Spotlight, but instead of only searching documents, it's for everything and uses AI, but it literally tracks everything you do. And I can't imagine anything wrong with this. And if you can't tell, I'm being very sarcastic. Since getting his hands on the system, security researcher Kevin Beaumont, who goes by Gossy the Dog on Twitter, Mastodon, and other platforms, has been doing breakdowns of the new Microsoft recall system. The software is available now, but before we even dive into what Kevin found, we need to call out that at the moment, Recall has been globally enabled by default on Microsoft Intune managed users. You need to go in and disable AI data analytics in your instance's settings if you wish to prevent this. Of course, with the push of the AI narrative, the new systems will all have AI monitoring and features turned on by default. However, the information captured for the recall system is stored in a SQLite database that, according to Kevin, can be stolen without physical access. According to Microsoft, they need physical access. He found that there was Azure AI backend code, API hooks for monitoring, as well as app integrations, and no ability to delete screenshots of content you delete from your computer, including WhatsApp messages and encrypted messages. Microsoft is about to set cybersecurity back a decade by empowering cyber criminals via poor AI safety. Kevin did an excellent write-up all about the security failures of the current estimated state of the recall program, including those that he found through a local instance he managed to get running on a non-Copilot Plus system. In a self-ran Q&A blog, he states the following. Have you ever exfiltrated your own recall database? Yes, I have automated exfiltration and made a website where you can upload a database and instantly search it. I am deliberately holding back technical details until Microsoft ships the feature as I want to give them time to do something. I actually have a whole bunch of things to show and think the wider cyber community will have so much fun with this when it's generally available. But I also think that it's really sad as real world harm will ensue. Recall has already raised international concern. The UK's Information Commissioner Office has already begun a probe into a potential privacy nightmare that is the recall system. If you plan on purchasing a Microsoft Copilot Plus PC or are a Microsoft tool administrator, make sure you go in and are fully aware of everything that the Microsoft AI might be capturing. If your home or office router became bricked towards the end of October 2023, I have a story for you. The team at Lumen Technologies Black Lotus Lab identified the use of a 2018 remote access Trojan named Chalubo that was used to take down and brick over 600,000 routers belonging to a specific ISP. While they don't have the exact way the initial access was gained, they were able to figure out how the systems were bricked. They assume it was via an undisclosed zero day. 
the malware goes through a series of file retrievals and checks, then starts to do outreach to a hard-coded list of C2 servers and downloads and executes the second stage. The infection mechanism process was done remarkably well, which would account for why there was only a single report surrounding this malware family. The only mistake we observed on the threat actor's part was in using the same exact encryption key and nonce that was previously documented in the 2018 report. The rat is loaded and a destructive payload is deployed. Given the final state of the routers, as well as how efficient the malware was at self cleanup, they were unable to get the exact payload used to destroy the systems. The team at Black Lotus Labs assumes that this was an attempt to cause an outage for a specific ISP. The ISP service area covers rural and underserved communities, which may have led to a disruption in critical infrastructure for these areas. What did you think about ThreatWire this week? I feel like we are at an inflection point right now with AI. I remember a few years ago with the cryptocurrency boom, we had a bunch of companies get hit in rapid succession with security issues. Do you think that's what's about to happen with AI? And speaking of AI, last week's AI written story was the new DNS bomb attack. That is the last of the AI automated stories, but if you want to maybe make this happen again, you should definitely let me know in the comments down below. But thank you so much for watching ThreatWire for the week of June 3rd, 2024. If you enjoyed this reporting, please head over to patreon.com slash threatwire where you can support this ad-free show. If you want to find me online, I'm at ending with Ali on everything, including Minecraft, and I'm definitely trying to grow on my Instagram. So if you could go over there and follow me, that would be the best thing you could do. Anyways, good luck, have fun, and don't get caught.